Hello, this is Evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. Coming to you with some scripture and then some news about some things that's been going on in the world, in the United States. First off, I wanted to read real quick on in 2 Timothy 3. The states, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. I got here social media, and of course uh, there will be scoffers, and etc. Lovers of money, thinking that you must work for lots of money to be a true Christian. Or a believer. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, saying uh, that there is no God. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders. Or again, uh, scoffers. Without self control. Killing, sexual sin, same-sex marriage, brutal, dis, excuse me, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, hardy, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, movies, reality TV, game shows, soap operas. This could go on. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. A while back, I was doing some studying to try to earn a uh, master's degree from a uh, online college and uh, while I was doing some research for class I ran across an article a journal that was written by a medical doctor that said that medical doctors in ERs were being paid by the government not to treat people that they deemed were no longer like viable to society. Now, here's a, uh, a report from the WBNS 10 TV out of Columbus, Ohio, where a woman in a uh, Florida hospital was in the hospital being treated for uh, breathing problems but she didn't want to leave because she still felt like she was still having some problems but they called the police the police came put her in handcuffs and was starting to escort her well arrested her for first off the police arrested her for uh, disorderly conduct and trespassing, and she pa she she basically passed out as the officer was uh, taking her out in handcuffs. He uh, took her back into the ER, and evidently. The hospital said her vital signs were good. And that's why that they uh, had released her. But like I said, on the way out, the uh, she had collapsed. And basically she had died. 
Now there is an autopsy being performed. This happened yesterday. Woman dies after being forcibly remo removed from the hospital by police. She felt like she's still having problems breathing. It's this Obamacare. Like I said, uh, in my uh, video, I did about Renee going to the ER and being sent home. She's on antibiotics, clean the mice and antibiotics. The problem is, people, they just don't, they don't know, well, some people say, well, this has been going on for years before Obamacare. Not like it has been since Obamacare. Since Obamacare, things have gotten worse. The doctor I see, he had his own practice. Because of Obamacare, he basically is now an employee of the hospital. He no longer has his own practice. It's just getting so out of hand. Granted, when I was growing up, I suffered with a lot of nighttime heartburn. I started getting nighttime heartburn when I was around 11 years old after I had my appendix taken out by the old country doctor in New Kimberstown. I had Dr. Grickalaw. He took my appendix out when I was 10 years old, and then I've been going to him on and off uh, as a child and as a young adult, and uh, even as an adult. The problem is... That uh, I, I I kept when I became an adult, I was telling him about my heartburn. He uh, he just said, "Oh, I just think you just have heartburn. You know, just uh, take tums." I told him, "Doctor, I have taken a ton of tums, and my." ex-wife was seeing this other doctor in uh, Dover, Ohio that she went to um, to have our sons so he took me in as a patient and put me through tests and he said I had one of the worst cases of gastroreflux disease they had ever seen Put me through some more tests and, well, had a little high in a hernia. Later on down the road, I end up getting Barrett's esophagus, which is where I'm high risk for esophagus cancer. The thing is, people. In in uh, this uh, report here from uh, Channel 10 TV, 
if you go read it, there's a nurse that said that they deal mostly with the insurance. They're an RN and they deal mostly with the insurance side of things. But it's all about money. It's all about money. And Renee, she has been having these issues with her health. When she's awake, she'll be coughing and, and uh, her eyes will be watering and bothering her. Her ear will be bothering her. Uh, she'll be coughing and sneezing and uh, just all around, you know, up in here in her head area. Just totally miserable. And then her leg hurts. It's, you know, still a little more redder than what should be. But it's not warm to the touch. She still has that rash. It's clearing up a little bit. I keep washing her leg off and putting the lotion on it. It, it, it's just a lot of things going on with her health that isn't right. She was supposed to go to see her family doctor yesterday, but Renee didn't really feel like going. She was really worked up emotionally because of all her health problems. She feels that nobody really truly cares. I keep telling her, you know, you need to go, you need to go. Even though her doctor is a D.O., you need to go. And talk to her about, you know, your health, your health problems. The problem is, her doctor that she sees, she keeps saying, well, I can't tramp on the toes of the other doctors. In other words, I can't. Tramp on the toes of your lung doctor, your e, uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor. I can't tramp on your the toes of your foot and ankle doctor. And what he's doing for wound care. Can't tramp on the toes of your uh, pain doctor. Can't tramp on the toes of any of your specialists. All she can do is talk to Renee about basically her blood pressure, her GERD, her um, cholesterol and things of that nature and her thyroid but when it comes to anything else really doesn't even want to talk to Renee about it so Renee's like well why should I even bother going to a doctor that can't talk to me about all my other health problems My doctor does. He asks me about my pain. He asks me about my, my feet. He checks my feet while I'm there, besides my foot doctor. My doctor checks, uh, talks to me about everything. But her doctor, even when she goes to the, uh, the um, stack care, They'll say, well, we can't, you know, tramp on the toes of the other doctors. We can't, you know, tell you what to do and what not to do that the other doctors are telling you. Mm. Just came over uh, eight minutes ago. Um, down around, uh, I guess, uh, Cincinnati area. Columbus area and Cincinnati area is under a, a severe thunderstorm watch. That's another thing too I wanted to mention before um, I get off here. I'm trying to put the computer down so it doesn't fall. This is December 23rd. 
and the temperature right now is 63 degrees with a humidity of 74 got the door open and the fan are going because it is warm and look at the sky I mean it's been kind of cloudy partly cloudy basically and, and nice and sunny Renee she got up earlier she's been in bed most of the time and got up to try to eat see the sky she got up to she got up to uh, eat and she said I can't eat this I I'm tired I, I can't stay awake I don't know what's wrong with me my body my body just wants to shut down I'm like I need to try to eat something she just more or less so I, I can't I just can't stay awake she thinks it's the antibiotics that's doing it, but I told her no. They're not doing it. Her night meds, all her night meds makes her sleepy. Usually, if she takes them at night, then they make her sleep like maybe during the, till maybe 11 or noon, sometimes until 1. But, Lately, she's been sleeping more, and then she'll get up, and she's like, I can't stay awake. I can't keep my eyes open. So she went back to bed. I, I, she got up around 2, stayed up for a little while, I had to put some eye drops in her eyes, and she's coughing and everything, and trying to eat and went back to bed around uh, actually around 2 30 actually close to 3 and she's been in bed ever since she just doesn't feel good doesn't feel like staying awake And doctor, she feel like doctors don't care. Of course, if I take her to the ER, they'll probably say, "Well, we can't find nothing wrong with her. Send her home." She just sometimes feels like, "What's the use anymore? I might as well just stay in bed all the time." I don't know, I just, I don't know. I, I would like for somebody to, if they are a medical doctor, to help me out, figure out what's wrong with her, why she wants to sleep more. I know when a person's sick, their body just wants to, you know, rest or get better. But why is she so sick? Is it because of her leg? Is there some it because even though she's not running a fever, maybe there's still something going through her body because of her leg that they just don't want to find. Because they when I had her down to the ER, they said, Why should we even do blood work? That's what they said. No sense to do blood work because it doesn't look that bad and you're not running a fever well sometimes I get I, I you don't have to run a fever to be sick so somebody out there has the answers and I know he has the answers God has answers. And I know so, he's telling somebody out there what is wrong with Renee and, and how to help Renee.
uh, I'm at my wit's end. I, I try to do my best that I can do. But when you... It isn't that doctors don't want to listen. They're being paid not to listen. That's the problem. They're being paid no longer to listen to the patients. Especially patients that they deem is no longer viable to society. Just push them out the door, have some pills, take the pills, go home and die. And if someone can find that journal, that article that I found a long time ago from that doctor that talked about how doctors are being paid not to treat people, I'd like to know because I'd try to find it again, but I can't. The only way of finding that article is going into a library, online library. But you have to be a uh, student. To get it, because there's nothing really on the internet itself. That's how I found it was through the, uh, the library, online library, when I was a student on online. A lot of things got lost on my computer here a while back when I had some issues, and Renee thought she saved everything, and never did. A lot of things didn't get saved and got. Wiped off the hard drive. Well, that's all I got for now. God bless you. Have a blessed day.